Hi, welcome to our video on series, and here we're going to talk about um, what a series is, and how they're related to sequences, and and what the differences are. So a series is, and we'll look at some some common examples, is um, the sum, right? It's the sum of the digits or components, right, of a sequence and all that means is that if I have some type of sequence like 1 and 2 and 3 this is, this is an arithmetic sequence and I want to find the series right the series means that I take that sequence the 1 2 3 and so forth and I add it up right so the series says if I take 1 and I add it to 2 and 3 and I keep going up to some value n what do I get and actually, there's a, a very nice way to think about doing this. We we use um, sigma notation, or some, or often referred to as summation. And we say, um, let's start at some value, right? Let's start somewhere. K equals whatever we want to start at. Let's start at one, perhaps, and go up to the n value. Well, here in this series, this is called an, an arithmetic sequence, or in this case, an arithmetic series. All that means is each each number goes up by a constant amount, right? There's a constant interval. So here we can go up, start at k and go up to some n for the for the number k. And what this means is you take you take you plug these values in for k into here, and then you add them up. So first you plug in one, and then the next whole number two, and then next number three, and we just keep going, right? And then we get n minus one, right? The second to last number, and then n. So this is how I represent adding up the sequence. And what's really interesting is, is if we take um, this and we say, well, let that be represented by S. And then what if I rewrote S again? So I took it a second time, but this time I wrote it in another order. So instead of doing one, and starting with one on the left-hand side, I'm going to change the order. I'm just using the commutative property. It doesn't change anything, so, so it's one plus two, right? Keep going with this, all the way up to n minus two plus n minus one plus n. And now, um, what if I add these two s's, two s's together, right? What do I get? Well, what's what is n plus one? That's n plus one. What is n minus one plus two? Well, that's n plus one, right? And we keep going. What is 3 plus n minus 2? Well, that's n plus 1. What is 2 plus n minus 1? Well, that's n plus 1, right? And last over here, what is 1 plus n? Well, it's n plus 1. So all we have, really, when we're adding up two s's, right? This equals two s's, are a bunch of n plus 1's. How many n plus 1's? Well, n of them, right? Because we're dealing with n terms. So really what we have, if we were to look at this, we could say we have n, n plus 1 terms, and that was equal to 2 s's. So if I want to know what s is, I can just solve this equation. And s is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. And this is great because now if I give you a sequence, let's go back to our original one, 1 plus 2 plus 3, and I can stop somewhere at some number. Let's say we stop at 100. This is a good review example for the quiz. I can use this notation. I can say, well, I want to find out if I start at 1, and I go up to 100, and I add all the terms in between. I want to know what this equals. Well, what this is saying is that is that this term right here equals this, right? because this was equal to s originally. So this equals um, n times n plus 1 over 2 right which is very nice because now we can we can solve this what's n it's this number right up here so all we do is plug that in it's 100 times 100 plus 1 it's 101 over 2 which is really just 50 times 101 and that's 5050 what a great fast way to add up every number from 1 through 100 is to use this relationship right here 
and we can keep going with this and look at and look at geometric series right now a geometric series is a little different it says what if we are adding up every number from I don't know 0 to some value n and we have our base and our exponent right so now we're adding up numbers like this and what we're going to get is we'll start with a to the 0 plus a to the 1 plus a to the 2 right we keep going all the way to a to the n minus 1 plus a to the n and again what if we say that equals s right this equals to s and then um, you know <laughs> um, what I could do here is combine this now in another interesting way but this time all I'm going to think about is what if I did a a times s right what would that mean well I would be distributing a to each of these terms so all I'm going to get now a to the 0 times a well that's just a a to the first a to the first times a is a to the second a to the second times a is a to the third I'm going to keep going with this all the way to this term right here a to the n minus 1 times a is a to the n and then a to the n right a to the n times a is a to the n plus 1. So a times s is, is equal to this sequence right here. And then what if we said, okay, if I take away s, what could, what's going to happen? And all we're doing right here really is, is playing around with all this stuff. Well, s equals a to the 0 plus a to the 1 plus a to the 2nd plus a to the 3rd, right, all the way up to a to the n. And we're subtracting here. And what happens here if I subtract? Well, a to the s, a times s minus s, what's that going to be? Well, here, this is a to the 0. I don't know if you can read that. But we're taking that away, and we're not taking it away from anything, so it's negative a to the 0. But then, then what's nice is that, you know, these terms cancel out, these cancel out. We're just subtracting them from each other. All the way up to a to the n plus 1. So we have now negative a to the 0, right plus a to the n plus 1 and so we have and now altogether this is saying a to the s minus s equals a to the n plus 1 minus a to the 0 and what is a a to the n plus 1 minus a to the 0 can we can we reduce that at all yes a to the 0 equals 1 so this means that this equals a to the s minus s equals a to the n plus 1 minus 1. And if we factor s out on the left-hand side, we get s times a minus 1, right? And now we can finish the geometric series. We can say s times a minus 1 equals what? Well, it equals a to the n plus 1 and then minus 1. And we want to solve for s. That was our original goal. We want to know what that was. We divide both sides by a minus 1, so it's a to the n plus 1, right? a to the n plus 1 minus 1 over a to the a minus 1. And that is how we can solve for a geometric series. So when I was going to some text, uh, some practice, practice test prep, uh, they were nice enough to include some samples. And the one I came across was this. And I like this one. Um, we are adding up, um, you know, 1 plus 2 plus, plus, plus 4, plus 8, and so forth. Um, and actually, I'm sorry, let me, let me move that. What you're, what you're probably going to see, or you, what you could see, really, on when you're dealing with a series, you might be asked to add up everything in a series, it's, this is a geometric series, up to a certain point, all the way up to 1,024. And then what you might have to do is figure out what's the f what's the formula to represent this. In this case, it's going to be two to the x because we're taking we're we're taking each number and doubling it. So that means we're multiplying it by two, over and over again. Um, and so we're using powers of two. So this is really a, a summation problem from k equals one to to this power right here. So you have to ask yourself what power of x gives me one thousand and and 24 and I think the answer is 10 2 to the 2 to the 10th power gives me 1024 so really 
our variables are what we're plugging in here, so we're going to go up to 10, and we're dealing with 2 to the k. So what does that equal? Well, if we look at our formula right here, this just equals 2 to the n plus 1. Again, this is n right here. So this equals 2 to the 11th minus 1 over 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is just 1, and the answer is 2 to the 11th minus 1. So if we add up every number in the sequence, we get 2 to the 11th power, which is 2,048, minus 1, which is 2,047. And that would be the result of this, of this sequence right here. And some other fun results also pop up. Um, some other results that we get. One thing we could deal with is, let's look at another, another window here. What if you were given something like this? Here's another sample I encountered. Plus one, plus one half, plus one fourth, and so forth. All right. So basically, now we're going towards all the way up to infinity. Right. We're approaching infinity. How do we deal with this? Well, first I tried to incorporate um, in all these terms at once, but I realized that it might be easier to take four plus plus two, and that gives me six. So it's going to be six plus something over here, right? Some series over here. And, and what this is right here can be represented by the idea that you have um, one half, right, to the k power. Because if we start with k equals zero and we go all the way to infinity, um, when we first plug it in, we're going to get one half to the zero power, which is one, and then one half to the one power, which is one half, one half squared, and so forth. So we're going to have this. And now this is a special case because we're going on forever in our problem. So I'm just going to, to, to simplify this. I'm going to rewrite this as 6 plus summation k equals 0 to n, right, sum n, 1 half, or I just guess I should say 1 half k equals 0 up to some k. Maybe, I don't know if I've been messing that notation up the whole time. But this would be from k equals 0 up to, up to some k. Right, and we have one half to the k power. Um, what's that going to equal? Well, one way to deal with that is just to rewrite it using our shortcut. This equals six plus one half to the k plus one power minus one over one half minus one. Right, that's a nice easy way to simplify it. And how do you deal with something like this? Because where k is going to be an approaching infinity. That's where the limits come into play. As k approaches infinity, we have 1 half, right, to the infinity plus 1 minus 1 over 1 half, right, 1 half minus 1. Now, what does this mean here, 1 half to the infinity plus 1? Well, that means this number is going to become really small really fast. So if we just think about that, the limit as k approaches infinity of 1 half right, to the k power, this is going to equal 0 because 1 half is going to get infinitely small as we raise that exponent over and over again. So what we're left with is just negative 1 over 1 half right, minus 1. And what's that? Well, 1 half minus 1 is we have negative 1 over negative 1 right, 1 half, and that just equals positive 2. So that means that, that in this sequence, everything here in the parentheses equals 2. So this altogether we have 2 plus 6, and this sequence will give us 8, which is so cool that we can actually converge and, and figure that out. Now some other examples you might encounter it might involve cosine or, or sine or some combination of that. And one I came across during test prep session that I think is useful to look at is the case where n goes from 0 to infinity, but now we're dealing with the cosine, oop, not the con, the cosine of 2 to the n, which means that we're always going to be dealing with an even exponent here, right? Cosine 2 to the n theta. Well, what does this equal? And you can start by plugging this in. It's going to be cosine to the 2 to the 0 of theta plus cosine of 2 to the 1 of theta plus cosine 
uh, to the second theta, and I think you get the pattern here. Um, now what's going to happen is, well, this is cosine to the zero power, which means it equals cosine of theta to the zero power plus cosine of theta to the second power plus cosine of theta to the fourth power and so forth. Now for, for a function with even exponents only, and then we'll talk about the odd exponents, um, you can summarize this type of pattern. What you can say is um, that this is going to equal 1 over 1 minus r, where r is the ratio between the terms. Right? If you notice that, in other words, what do I have to multiply this by to get this term right here? What do I have to multiply this term by to get this term here? The answer is cosine squared. So really this is going to equal 1 over 1 minus cosine squared theta. What's that? If you remember, um, cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta equals 1. So 1 minus the cosine squared of theta is just the sine squared of theta. And 1 over the sine squared of theta is just the cosecant, excuse me, squared of theta. And actually, this is so interesting to me that this actually reduces to that. Now, you might also see functions where instead of 2n, the exponent is odd, right? 2 to the n plus 1. In that case, um, it, the sequence will reduce to a different pattern. This is for even exponents. And for odd exponents, we have a different a different reduction. And actually, that's going to be a over 1 minus r squared. And a, a is just the coefficient, right? There's no coefficient here. And in fact, for the even function, we could have said it's a over 1 minus r. But it might be worth to note that for odd exponents, right, these infinite series can be reduced to these patterns here, and the even can be reduced to this pattern right here. And I'm not going to go into the details of why in this video. It's something we might explore in, in other videos, but I just wanted to mention that and throw that out there. All right, hope this helped.